This is the wireless dynamic sensor system. Um, it is a, a device that has multiple sensors in it. Uh, it is a force sensor. It's plus or minus 50 newtons. Um, it has a three-axis accelerometer, and uh, so it measures, we can do acceleration in, in uh, three dimensions there. And it also has a built-in altimeter, and uh, it's uh, plus or minus 200 meters, and it's really designed uh, to be able to use that feature maybe on a roller coaster. You're doing amusement park physics, and you want to be able to measure your altitude, um, and so when you turn it on, at that point, it's plus or minus uh, 200 meters from the point that you turn it on. And uh, um, so uh, you, you have the ability to use um, any of those sensors independently if you want to. So you can actually use just the force sensor if you want to, and maybe one axis of, of acceleration or you know, two axes or whatever. And so you can, you can actually define that, or if you want the altimeter off or on. Um, you know, if you're doing something that doesn't involve an altitude change, you probably don't want to use it. So you can uh, determine that. Um, the device is wireless, uh, and so it actually communicates uh, with the, the new LabQuest 2, has built-in Bluetooth, and so it's using Bluetooth, which is a, a short-range radio standard, and so it can talk that way. You can use it with the computer, with the Logger Pro software, it will also uh, do that uh, via Bluetooth. And, uh, so the, uh, the device itself um, has a battery, it's a rechargeable battery, and so you can actually plug in the recharger there. And there is a switch right here on the face that actually turns the device on. So if I turn it on, um, at first uh, I end up with, there's a couple of little lights there. Uh, the first one, there's a little, little running man there, it's green. Uh, that indicates that it's actually ready to, to uh, collect some data. Um, the, the lower light, where it says Bluetooth, right now is red, and that indicates that it's not communicating with a device yet. And uh, one thing that's different about this sensor than our other sensors is that this one doesn't auto-ID with, um, with a, the data logger. And the reason for that is that if you had uh, a whole bunch of these in the classroom, you wouldn't want them automatically connecting because you need to define which device you want to, to talk to. And uh, so we'll actually be able to set that up. Once it's talking to the device via Bluetooth, then that uh, red light turns green. And that tells me that it's actually running here. Um, there's a little uh, battery icon down here that uh, depending on where you're, uh, if it's plugged in, and right now it's not lit because it's not plugged in to, to recharge the battery. Um, this button right up here is a button that allows us to have the device start collection uh, or stop collection uh, on its own without even being connected via Bluetooth to a device. Uh, it has built-in memory and uh, so it's possible to say, get on a roller coaster, actually press the button, have it begin to collect data. Once it's collected data, you come back and have it upload to a computer uh, and so you have your data from your, from your collection there. So that allows that you do that. So it's a start-stop button there. So uh, I'm going to do a little data collection with this. And uh, I'm actually going to attach this to uh, one of our cars and run it here on the track. And I'm going to do the Newton Second Law Lab where I'm going to uh, apply a force to this and move it back and forth. And I'm interested in the force and the acceleration of the cart. And maybe from that I can determine the mass. Um, this screw right here allows me to attach this to the car, and so there's a there's a the, um, the bolt there, and there's a nut that there actually the, the bolt actually falls out of the back there. So to mount this on the car, I need to remove the nut and bolt. So I'm going to unscrew this, and that will loosen up the, the nut there, and I can take the bolt out, and then the there's the actual nut piece of it, and then. The, the bolt I'm going to put down on the car and uh, so it actually goes into the slot on the car here and so I'm just going to kind of slide it down there on the slot and then I can lower the sensor on top of the car and then put the, the nut portion on there and then tighten it up and now it's attached to the car. So that way it allows me to move it back and forth with the, uh, the force detector there, or the force sensor. Okay, um, so now we're actually ready to have it communicate with the LabQuest 2 in this instance. And uh, so to do this, uh, I need to come in and 
have it detect the sensor. We notice right now that we are on the meter screen without any sensor attached. And the way we do this on this one is I'm going to go up to sensors and I actually, there's a, a WDSS setup. And so right now it's looking for a device and so I'm going to hit uh, scan for device. And so it's looking for uh, a Bluetooth device. Now I mentioned earlier that you might have several of these in the classroom. Well, it turns out that they are named, um, and so they have names, and so that when you have, you can look for a particular one, you might have a sticker that says, you know, what's the name of this particular device here, um, and it found it here, and uh, so I'm just going to say okay, and so now it's found the device, and it comes up here, and it asks me, you know, what of the sensors do I want to enable? Do I want the four sensor and three axis? Do I want everything? I could check all the boxes if I did that. Um, for this instance, I really only want the force and the X direction. Um, it defines X is this way, uh, Y is this way, and Z is this way. And uh, so I want the force and the X acceleration to be able to do what I'm going to do here. So for this one, uh, I just want to come here and I'm going to check the box next to X, next to force, and I'll say OK. And now I have my meter screen here. And so it's got um, X and uh, the force sensor there. Now, um, things like the force sensor, you're going to get different readings depending upon the orientation of this. And so there are certain sensors that you might want to zero before you begin collection, and it's one of them, um, because you know depending on the orientation, you're going to get different readings. And uh, so you often will zero the sensor in the orientation you're going to use it, so that it reads zero. So it's it's like your bathroom scale. If you want to have it read zero, so you tear it uh, before you do that. So you're really tearing the scale here. Um, and uh, so I'm going to do this, and uh, so I'll come down and. Uh, I'm actually going to zero that one, and I'll go ahead and zero that one too, so that I have both of them uh, reading zero here. Now let's take a look at our default collection parameters here. It's defaulting to 50 samples per second, time-based graph, uh, with the duration of 10 seconds. And uh, so which is will be fine for what we're going to do here. And uh, so I'm going to put it on the, the track here. And here's what I'm going to do. I am going to be moving this back and forth on the track and simultaneously measuring both the force and the acceleration in the X direction. Uh, and, and we'll see those on the graph here. So, so I'm going to get ready to start collection here. And uh, so I'm going to hit collect. And then I will just move it back and forth. So we have our two graphs there. There we go. And so we see on the upper graph we have the force graph, and on the lower graph we have the acceleration graph. Interesting to note that they are in phase. Uh, we say that um, force is directly proportional to acceleration, so maybe there's a relationship there. And uh, so that's what we end up with here. Now, what I would like to do is if F equals MA, uh, I might be able to determine what is the mass of the system by using the data that I have here. So I want to do another graph. Right now I have these graphs as uh, force versus time and acceleration versus time. I want to do a graph of force versus acceleration so that I end up with a graph uh, that's a linear graph and the slope ends up being the mass of the system. And uh, so to do this, I'm going to go up here and under graph, I'll go here and I'm going to do show graph one. So I'll just do force versus time. And what I want to do here is I want to change the axis from force versus time to the um, acceleration down here. And so to do that, I'm going to come in here and tap there and I want to do acceleration. And now I end up with this. And um, so there's kind of a, a, a scatter plot there of all the data points in there, but it looks like it's fairly linear. And at this point, I want to come in and actually run the curve fit. So I'll do curve fit, select that. And now I want to maybe try to do a linear fit of that. And I end up with, with this equation. So I've get, uh, um, there's my relationship right there. So I get 
um, 0.7, which would be 0.7 kilograms. I know that this one is um, 500 grams and this is approaching 200. I think it's 183. So I am right there close. Um, and in fact, if you look at my, my correlation coefficient, it's almost perfectly linear. So it's a, a nice relationship there. And so now if I say OK, then that's what it's on there. And it's drawing that best fit line. Um, and so I might use that for a Newton second law lab. So again, um, this sensor is uh, great for using with physics. Um, and the nice part is the fact that it is wireless, so you don't have the wires impeding uh, what you're doing. Um, the, the fact that you can use it, obviously, on a cart and track. Uh, you can mount it, do centripetal accelerations with it if you wanted to. Uh, amusement park physics, uh, all those kinds of things uh, are, are really uh, excellent to do with this particular sensor. For a booklet of labs using the wireless dynamic sensor system, see the Vernier website.